Hi, welcome to Hub Bites. I'm Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. Today I'll be taking you through two key adrenergic receptors, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now this video isn't meant to be construed as medical advice and an individual risk-benefit analysis should be carried out by medical professionals when making a decision with regards to choosing any of these medications for their patients. The alpha 1 receptor is situated in the locus ceruleus, the limbic system, including the hippocampus and the amygdala, and the cerebral cortex. Now, the locus ceruleus is an important part of the brain that houses the norepinephrine or noradrenergic neurons, and there are projections from this area to several parts of the brain. We know that noradrenaline plays a really important part in a number of brain functions, which include mood, cognition, reward systems, alertness, arousal, pain, and if we stimulate the alpha-1 receptor, it can result in a number of negative experiences. And these include, it can disrupt higher order cognitive processes. It can result in enhancement of the primitive fear response, which becomes relevant for treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, which I'll come to. It can also disrupt sleep and can enhance the stress response, the cortisol stress response, by increasing levels of corticotropin releasing hormone. So at this point, it would be really good to visit the video that I did on how stress and trauma affect the brain, where I describe the intricate relationship between cortisol, corticotropin releasing hormone, noradrenaline, and how that impacts the brain. So to summarize, Stimulation of the alpha-1 receptor can disrupt cognitive processes, affect sleep, can enhance the primitive fear response, and enhance the cortisol stress response. So therefore, if we antagonize this particular receptor, we can actually prevent or treat these negative effects. And prazosin is the alpha-1 agent or alpha-1 antagonist, alpha-1 adrenergic antagonist that is used in clinical practice and hence is used in post-traumatic stress disorder quite effectively to treat nightmares and hyperarousal. Now we know that approximately 70 to 80% of individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder will have um, uh, nightmares and hyperarousal that can be very, very distressing and result in insomnia. The next receptor is the alpha-2 receptor. Now the alpha-2 receptor is both presynaptic and postsynaptic, and there are three subtypes, A, B, and C. And we'll be talking about alpha-2 agonists. There are two key agents that are used in ADHD, which are clonidine and guanfacine. But clonidine is also quite versatile and is used in, as an anti-anxiety agent, can be used quite effectively to promote sleep and treat nightmares and post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. It also has analgesic properties. So let me talk about the alpha-2A receptor first, because the alpha-2A receptor is the predominant receptor in the prefrontal cortex. Now the prefrontal cortex requires a optimal level of catecholamine, for its optimal functioning. So if there's too little catecholamines, noradrenaline and dopamine, in the prefrontal cortex, then it results in inattention, uh, organizational difficulties, the key symptoms of ADHD. Similarly, if there's too much catecholamine, it results in a stress response, mental inflexibility, uh, rigidity, and misdirected attention as well. So therefore, we require there's this inverted U-shaped, and we want to be functioning around this middle range, an optimal, sort of almost a Goldilocks effect. You know, porridge not being too hot, not too cold, just optimal for optimal functioning. So therefore, let's talk about clonidine in a bit more detail. Clonidine is an alpha-2 agonist. Now, when it acts as an alpha-2 presynaptic agonist, it reduces noradrenergic activity. And by you can imagine in the prefrontal cortex when clonidine acts as a presynaptic 
uh, agonist. We know the presynaptic receptor is an autoreceptor, which means that when it acts as an agonist at a presynaptic receptor, it acts as a break and reduces noradrenergic tone. And by reducing noradrenergic tone in the prefrontal cortex, it reduces impulsivity and symptoms of hyperactivity in ADHD. On the other hand, by acting as an agonist at the postsynaptic 2A receptor, it can enhance noradrenaline in the prefrontal cortex and strengthen network connectivity, which can be advantageous for symptoms such as inattention organizational difficulties. It acts as an alpha-2 agonist also at these B and C receptors. And here it gives some additional effects such as sedation, uh, hypnosis, and when it acts on the dorsal horn neurons, it has analgesic properties by reducing the levels of substance P. So clonidine, as I mentioned, can be quite a versatile agent. Now when we compare that to guanfacine, guanfacine is also an alpha-2 um, a agonist, but it is predominantly an agonist at the postsynaptic receptor. So therefore, essentially strengthens um, prefrontal cortex connectivity by increasing noradrenaline levels. There are some other alpha-2 agonists as well, tizanidine that's used in muscle spasticity and you know some in uh, anesthesia as well, which I won't cover here today as it outside the, the field of my expertise. Now let's talk about the clinical use of prazosin and clonidine. So I mentioned prazosin is an alpha-1 adrenergic antagonist, so reduces adrenergic tone. It is evidence-based in the treatment of nightmares and hyperarousal and post-traumatic stress disorder. And it can be started off at 1 milligram at nighttime, or sometimes even less. And the main side effect that we need to look at for is drop in blood pressure as it reduces adrenergic tone. Now, important thing clinically to recognize is that prazosin has a very short half-life, mean half-life of approximately 2.5 hours. So if we think about it as three hours, you multiply that by five and you get steady state level. And also at 15 hours, you'll have 95% of the medication washed out completely. So essentially, if we want cover throughout the day, we're going to need to prescribe it at either twice a day, thrice a day, or in some cases, four times a day. So I use it in clinical practice. If I just want to treat nightmares, hyperarousal, I might prescribe it at nighttime. But during the day, if individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder have hyperarousal, heightened anxiety uh, during the day, along with flashbacks, then prazosin can be quite effective to spread out uh, during the day. The dose range is really wide. So anywhere from, of course, one milligram as you start off, but the maximum dose in literature is 50 milligrams per day. And in, there has been case reports of between 30 and 45 milligrams as well. Personally, I've never needed to go that high. My maximum doses have been up to 12 milligrams spread out throughout the day. Quite effective for reducing the hyperarousal flashbacks and of course, nightmares, hyperarousal at nighttime as well. So please do monitor blood pressure when using prazosin. Let's talk about clonidine. Now clonidine uh, can be used in ADHD. As I mentioned, it is an agonist, alpha-2 agonist at both presynaptic and postsynaptic. So you get this nice balance because at the presynaptic uh, agonism level, reducing noradrenergic tone, you tend to get um, the reduction of impulsivity and hyperactivity. At the postsynaptic end, you get enhancement of noradrenergic release in the frontal, prefrontal cortex, uh, strengthening connectivity and improving attention and concentration. But it also has this alpha-2 agonism at B and C and therefore can have this sedative effect as well, reducing hyperarousal overall. Uh, but interestingly, and it's postulated that that effect happens through the thalamus, but also has analgesic activity. Therefore, in patients that might have uh, pain, so chronic pain, psychiatric illness, and have significant sleep difficulties, hyperarousal, uh, clonidine may be a, a useful agent to consider there as well. H how do I start it? Uh, usually, if I'm cautious, I might start at 50 micrograms, but generally 100 micrograms monitoring blood pressure closely. Why do we need to monitor blood pressure? We know that the, uh, the alpha-2b uh, is situated on uh, blood vessels and uh, reduces the vasopressor response, but clonidine also stimulates the imidazoline receptors, which contributes to the hypotensive effect, so a synergistic hypotensive uh, effect, and therefore it's important to monitor blood pressure. So I'd start off at 100 micrograms, gradually go up. You'll see that in ADHD, maximum doses have been mentioned at 400 micrograms, 
uh, in Akathisia, for example, as part of the algorithm, again, a video that I've covered, um, you'll see that the maximum dose used is 800 micrograms. So personally, I've never needed to go above 400 micrograms. Clonidine has a longer half-life, uh, up to about 23 uh, hours. So therefore, in some patients, it can be prescribed just once a day. I usually prescribe at nighttime, because I'm uh, particularly if I want to improve sleep and uh, treat the nightmares of post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, or we know that individuals with ADHD tend to have circadian rhythm dysfunction or sleep difficulties. Therefore, it can be successfully combined uh, with a stimulant as well to address the nighttime uh, hyperarousal. So these are some of the techniques, of course, with um, expert um, psychiatric input um, you know, can be considered um, something to be uh, looked at. So when we're thinking about um, clonidine, we're looking at, uh, in some cases, you can prescribe it just once a day, but uh, we know that the half-life can range at the lower end uh, about five hours. So in some cases, one might need to prescribe it uh, twice a day as well. So it's an individual decision that one needs to make, but it's very, very important to monitor blood pressure when we're um, uh, increasing the doses and starting uh, clonidine as well. Particularly if prescribed at night time, I often tell patients, you know, when they wake up, when they're getting out of bed uh, to be cautious, um, you know, move their legs uh, before they get up because some individuals can experience a dizziness. And with clonidine, other side effects such as uh, dry mouth can occur because it is a adrenergic agonist. So there, at the postsynaptic receptors, you can get this increased noradrenaline response. So therefore, symptoms such as dry mouth, constipation can occur. And in some cases, even though you might be treating nightmares, some patients may actually experience a worsening of nightmares simply because the postsynaptic activity becomes greater in those patients than the presynaptic activity that we're trying to uh, treat. So Clonidine can have that side effect of worsening uh, nightmares as well in some uh, patients. But generally quite an effective uh, agent uh, for in PTSD. Both of these can be used uh, successfully. Now clonidine, because it reduces noradrenergic tone, I mentioned that can be used in pain. Um, uh, the, the dorsal on neuron activity reducing substance P, pain, hyperarousal. But interestingly, is evidence-based in the treatment of substance use withdrawals as well. So we know that an opioid detox, uh, lofexidine, which is again an alpha-2 agonist, is used. Clonidine, again, within the same family. So uh, in alcohol withdrawal, opioid withdrawal, and of course in um, you know, smoking cessation as well, clonidine can be a useful uh, agent to be used. So besides clonidine, uh, one other agent that I did mention that was an alpha-2 agonist was guanfacine. Guanfacine is predominantly used in ADHD in children and of course can be used in adults as well at higher doses. But I won't be going into that in more detail because I predominantly wanted to focus on the norepinephrine activity in post-traumatic stress disorder, of course the norepinephrine activity in ADHD as well. Uh, so I hope that this has given you an idea about how we can understand the psychopharmacology of an alpha-1 adrenergic antagonist in prazosin and treat the hyperarousal nightmares in PTSD. Now, there has been a recent study by Raskin that showed a negative effect of prazosin on, uh, uh, on post-traumatic stress disorder nightmares. But the author himself mentioned that, uh, you know, there have been six positive studies, one negative study, and this study was carried out in stable patients. So the question is whether prazosin actually may be much more beneficial in patients that experience high levels of arousal and distress along with nightmares and may actually have a better effect. Um, so the author Raskin did mention that um, we, we, one shouldn't necessarily change clinical practice because of this single negative study, we've had six positive studies. Uh, when it comes to alpha-2 agonists, we've got clonidine guanfacine, uh, clonidine being quite versatile, uh, anti-anxiety, um, anti-hyperarousal effects uh, used in ADHD, uh, both to treat the hyperarousal at nighttime and improve sleep, but also to strengthen uh, network connectivity in the prefrontal cortex through its postsynaptic uh, activity. Also very useful in substance use withdrawal, but and um, evidence-based in the treatment of akathisia as well. So I hope that you found it useful. Uh, please share your clinical experiences uh, as well. And I look forward to seeing you in another uh, video, uh, Hubbytes video. Uh, until then, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.